thanks everybody for attending today's seminar. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do today is go through a, a pretty broad overview of glass as a structural material. Most of us aren't taught about glass as a, as a structural material in school, and there isn't a lot of information in the design community that's readily available um, to engineers who are kind of tasked with designing a glass structure or reviewing somebody else's calculations for glass. Um, I'm not going to go through a, a large number of examples or kind of design specifics in this seminar. Um, there are, there's another seminar, I believe, that SK Ghosh has available that I've given uh, that is more design specific. But really, I want to get into what, how does glass behave as a material and as something that is resisting loading? Um, and what are the governing codes for that? So just a general introduction to glass in buildings, kind of some history. I'll go through glass strength and where and how glass strength is derived, both an explicit approach um, and kind of a, a stochastic approach based on testing. I'll go through the IBC 2012 requirements, and then I'll go through a loose overview of design guidelines and the guidelines that are out there um, for glass design. Before I get too far into the presentation, there are a number of organizations and people that I'd like to thank for the information that I've been able to gather for this presentation. Um, COST, the Cooperation in Science and Technology, which is a group of, it's a, it's a group of intergovernmental organizations in Europe that puts together funding for various research projects, publications, and so on. And they had a glass network that um, was in existence for a number of years. I believe that that official uh, task group has, has kind of ended, um, but they were able to put together a lot of research and did quite a bit of work on European glass design guidelines. A lot of the information in this presentation um, is, uh, is due to the folks in the cost group. Um, here in the United States, Ghana, the Glass Association of North America is a great resource. Um, they consist of manufacturers, suppliers, specifiers, engineers, folks from all over the glass and glazing industry, both building glass as well as automotive glass. Um, and other applications. And finally, ASTM, uh, the work that um, the E1300 committee, the guideline for, for glass design that is currently out there, um, there's a great committee of folks that keeps that um, guide up to date and has uh, really been having a lot of the conversations about how do we use glass as a material here in the United States. So um, thank you to them as well. So uh, introduction to glass in buildings. Just from a, from a historical approach, if we look back at buildings um, way back in the day, you, you know, we, we want glass, we want glazing in a structure to allow um, some type of a connection to the outside environment, um, from, from, from the inside to the outside environment. Uh, you know, pre-electricity, that was how we got light into buildings, et cetera. But um, historically, uh, if you go way back, we only had kind of small openings um, that were glazed. That glazing percentage has gotten larger as we've progressed technologically. Um, over the years, we start to see more and more instances in which glass makes up, can make up the majority of the facade of a building um, as compared to having to use that exterior facade as a bearing wall. We also have started to see in the last 20, 30, 40 years, um, 20, 30, 40 years, more glass in structural applications, so not just in walls in which you have a curtain wall or a window wall that's hanging um, and is allowing light in. But in this example, this is a medical school in Glasgow um, in which we have a skylight uh, or a roof system that's made both of, of glass panes forming the roof, um, but also glass forming the beams. So it's an entirely transparent facade. So generally a trend towards more transparency in design. Um, this is an example of a stair uh, in Dusseldorf. And there are other examples of glass stairs out there in which the glass that forms the um, guardrail also acts as a deep beam, um, effectively the stringer. And then we have um, treads, glass treads that span between the stringers on each side. So really kind of pushing the envelope in terms of what we can do with glass and how transparent we can get. The best examples I think that most folks are probably familiar with are the Apple stores around the world. Um, this is the Apple store in Shanghai. Um, it's it has curved glass uh, for the exterior facade, glass roof, glass columns, glass beams up at the roof level. Um, so effectively, everything that could be made of glass in this structure is glass. The more classic example are, is the Glass Apple Store um, in New York City, folks may be familiar with, and in other cities around the states. So those are flat glass pieces, um, but similar. they have a similar effect in terms of transparency um, as this one. And this is if you were to go down into that entry to the Apple Store, there's a glass staircase that kind of continues and spins around the central glass 